Hello, my name is Jaden Jergens and I live in Whitehall, Arkansas. All right, you go to Whitehall High School? Yes. Okay, and you're, you're gonna be a junior next year or? Yeah. Meet my boy Jaden. He was skateboarding at the Whitehall Park with a few friends and it was really cool to engage this young man. He had a really good personality, a real open spirit. And I just had a great opportunity to engage him and uh, thank God for this young man and praying that he comes closer to Jesus. Check it out. Okay, all right. So put it on a percentage scale, right? Because I love what you said, because I, I kind of have the same belief system. But so right now, scale from zero to 100%. How well, sure do you know you'll, you'll stand before God and be let in? I will be honest. Sometimes yep. I don't, I don't act upon it you know i yeah. don't really i haven't been going to church much recently right but um since because of that and you know and how other religions do it when it comes to christianity how some say if you don't act on it yeah i'd give it a 50 50 about a 50 50 just because you know i don't really know if if the way i do it is correct or the other the way like you yeah know, church of christ do it or like how others do it catholics and stuff like that so yeah you know it's kind of nervous sometimes and i try to like switch and see you know what's the truth one, what the yeah. truth truth is do you have any idea um, how to find out what is the truth, truth, or you just kind of search in, in a way you just kind of searching? I'm kind of searching. I'm just like, okay. you know, reading different verses, you know, looking in different like versions of the Bible right. and asking how others were taught it and stuff like that. Right. So when I got to college, I I was I wouldn't I was kind of like you in a way, and I had a guy walk up to me. And he 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 shared with me, what does it take for a person to truly be secure, right? And so. I'll give you, um, I'll give you, I'll just give you a snippet how, and I want you to just think through it, all right? all right? You don't have to necessarily believe it, but I want you to think through it because eternity is such a long time to be wrong. Like, I don't want to leave this world thinking like, do I got it? Yeah. Am I in? Am I out? Like, Because compared like, to eternity, it's like life's like short. Come on, man. You got it. You're exactly yeah. right. And so, but the Bible does talk about that a person can know, like beyond a shadow of a doubt, 100%. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you through about how to do that, all right? So, but first of all, I'm gonna go through a, a good person test with you just to see how how fair you measure up. All right. All right, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right, so, uh, so I'll give you the good person test. All right. Because this is the standard of which God is gonna use to judge you based on, to see if you're gonna get in. Yeah. So, question number one, no, no judgment. Then I have some good news for you because you're probably gonna flunk the test like I did in college, <laughs> but let's see. So, question number one, Jaden, how many lies have you told in your whole lifetime? A lot. Have a lot you? Of okay. Lies, yeah. All right. So, what do you call somebody to tell a bunch of lies? Um, a lie. All right. Have you ever stolen anything, even if it's really small? You know, one time I went to a gas station okay. and I had a bunch of items in my hands, and I was gonna get a piece of bubble gum to chew on, uh -huh. and I stuck it in my pocket. You right. Know? So I, because my hands were full. Okay. And I, I accidentally left it in my pocket. So okay. I just stole <laughs> a piece of bubble gum. It's okay. twenty-five cents. So. All right. Good. All right. <laughs> All right, so what do you call somebody that steals? Even if they steal one time, okay. All right, would you agree or disagree? I'd agree. All right, because uh, because obviously, like if a man goes into a, the courtroom, and let's two two men go into a courtroom for murder, and one says, "I murdered one person," I'm not a murderer, and the other one said, "I murdered fifty, you know, which one is a murderer? Both, Both right? Yeah. So it doesn't matter really matter the amount of times you broke it. If you break it one time, you're guilty. That makes yeah. sense. All right, so Jesus said this about adultery, and you if you probably gonna fail on this one too, but I'm gonna see. Jesus said that you have heard it, it was said that you should not commit adultery. You yeah. know what adultery is? Yes, like cheating. Yeah, right. And then Jesus took it up to a whole nother level. He says, but I say to you, if anyone who looks lustfully at a woman, just thinking about it, has yeah. already committed adultery with her in his heart. Guilty or not guilty? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe everyone's guilty. Yeah, I, I, I told you. <laughs> have you ever been angry with somebody to the point you almost felt like you, act, you didn't care if they existed? Are you almost seeing yourself doing something to him, or you didn't care what happened to him? I'll agree. Yeah, I had <laughs> You have any idea what commandment we break when we do that? I'm trying to think through them. I used to have them memorized a long time ago, but I don't remember them anymore. You ain't going to believe it, man. Which one? <laughs> it says, if you hate your brother, the Bible says you're a murderer. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's in 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. You can, you can look, I don't know if you guys, you can look at it if you want to, but it says, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. You want to check it out? You want to look at it? Just look. You can look at it. First John, chapter yeah, three, good. verse fifteen, and tell me what you think. You said first John. First John is a one in front of the John, chapter three, verse fifteen. Oh, I have to look at it on your phone. Mine's doing an update, I think. Yeah, it's an update. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm not holding on. First John. Yep, chapter three, verse? Chapter verse fifteen. So it's a one in front of the John, and then chapter three, verse fifteen. Okay, 
Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. It is scary. Yeah. So you see the standard, like, uh, what's another one? Um, so here's another one that got me in college. So I, I love basketball. <laughs> I love, like, food. Man, I, you know, I love the things that the world had to offer, right? Yeah. So I'll give you an illustration. So I'm walking in my house one day, and my kids, they love to play with me, right? They, yeah. they, they love daddy, right? But anytime I give them something that they really like, like they love to watch a show, yeah, right? Like I can come in the house, and if they're not watching the show, they're all on me. Yeah. But if I walk in the house, they won't even look at me because they're so caught up in the show that they have. So it's almost like they're more in love with what I gave them yeah. than me. That makes sense? It's kind of like idolizing. It's a, exactly. <laughs> So have you found yourself most of the time or sometimes in your life being more in love with what God has given you, but I don't really, not really concerned about him. Yeah, I'll admit, <laughs> like, right, like right now, since I yep. said I haven't been going to church lately, I right. guess I would say that I've been recently putting a skateboard above. Like, wow. See, me, I was bas mine was basketball. So you, you, you're guilty. Yeah. Like I'm, we was guilty. Like we're guilty. And so by your own admission, Jaden, you're a liar, a thief, adulterer, a murderer, and an idolater. That's only five of the commandments. That's like half. <laughs> right? And so, if you stood before God tonight, I hope you live to be 200, brother. But if today God came back for the breath he let you borrow, you think you'd be innocent or guilty? On you know, a day of judgment. I think I'd be guilty. All right, so what do you think God should do to you? If um, he's a good judge, what do you think he should do to you? Like, cast me into heaven or hell? Yeah. Probably. He probably cast me into hell. Yeah, if he's good. Yeah. Like, for instance, if somebody if somebody hurt your family member, you expect the judge to do what to the man that hurt your family? You put him in a life sentence. Yeah, if the judge just gave him, like, three months in jail, I say, hey, I'm going to just give you probation. Don't do that again. What kind of judge would he be? Uh, he's not on my side, I guess. No, right? he'll be a bad judge for yeah. not punishing the, the murderer or the person that hurt your family. Well, the Bible says God is a good judge. He's so good. That he has to, he has to, he has to punish everything, liars, thieves, murderers. He can't let one sin go unpunished. Or what kind of God would he be? Bad God. Bad God. Yes. He'd be a bad judge. He shouldn't even be God. So the Bible says that God is so holy. You know, what's your favorite drink in the world? Ooh, Sprite. All right. Let's take one drop of sewage and put it in your drink. Would you drink it? Probably not. No. No, because one drop contaminates the whole rest of the your Sprite. Yeah. Well, that's kind of how God is. If God let one of our sins into heaven without judging it or punishing it, it'll contaminate the whole rest of heaven. God wouldn't be good. So, yeah. here's the good news. So, here's the good news, Jaden. The good news is, even though he knew God, God knew that you were not going to be able to keep this, this standard. As a matter of fact, nobody could keep it. And he knew it. So, the Bible says he loved you so much, Jaden, that 2,000 years ago, he sent perfection for you. You have any idea who that is? Jesus. Yeah, he sends Jesus. And so Jesus came, and it's almost as though he's, his, G, your sins and my sins and all you guys' sins was transferred to him. He, he, he says, God, if you, could, if you could do it another way, like let this cup pass on me. He says, but if I got to drink up their sin, if, if I have to take their wrath, I'm willing to do it. So all of our sin 2,000 years ago was transferred to Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus became guilty. And whose fault was it? It was ours. Yeah. Our sin was transferred to him, and he became guilty. And when Jesus became guilty, you know what God did to his own, his own son? He sent him here to fix it all. Well, he crushes him first. He puts hell on his son. They beat him until his lungs was exposed. They spit on him. They called him names. And the Bible says the wrath of God was on Jesus, as though he was guilty. So it's almost as though, it, like, just say, if you stood before God, like, right now, the Bible says the wrath of God will be on you for all eternity. He'll be unleashing wrath on you because of your sin. But instead of him doing it to you, he did it to his son. Jeez. You see the difference? Yeah. So the good news is the Bible says if you will do two things, the Bible says God will divert the wrath and, 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 and let it fall on his son. If you will repent and tell God how sorry you are for what you've done, the sin that you've committed, the ways you've lived apart from him, idolatry, lying, murder. If you would tell God how sorry you are, and you're so sorry that you don't even want to go down that path no more, the Bible says God will treat you like Jesus. He'll transfer. It's almost like your sin will be transferred to him. He's crushed. 
But in, in exchange for your repentance and belief, he would exchange to you perfection. As though you never sinned. Wow. He'll wipe your slate completely clean as if you never did any of that. All because of what Jesus did on the cross for you. But you must re repent. That means do a, one, a, a 180. That, that, that's not turning all back around and going right back to your sin. It's more of, it's, a, a, it's, a, it's not a, what is it, 300 and what? 360. It's not a 360 because you're right back at your sin again. It's a 180 where you turn and you're walking totally away from what you used to do because of the passion you have for Jesus, because of what he's done. That makes sense? Yes. And if you will, if you choose to follow him and give him your life as much as you know how, the Bible says God will wipe the debt. And he'll, and on the day of judgment, God sees you like he sees Jesus because he's already paid the price. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> and that's what happened to me in college. Oh, like wow. I was never the same. And I began to like to spend more time reading his word. Man, I wanted to go to church because, man, look at what he's done for me. How can I neglect the, my savior? Yeah. And he'll give you a gift that you don't even deserve, man. All because he loves you so much. All right, so tell me, man, what you thinking? Well, I definitely need to get back more into church. Okay. You know. Yep. I do need to repent um, for more of my sins, you know. Yep. Try not to get as more angry. Yep. Try to, like you said, walk away from him, do 180. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so so basically, man, when I when I gave my heart to Jesus, when, when not that I, I don't really give anything, when, it's when I decided to follow Jesus, man, it's almost like I, I said I surrendered Jesus, and he held on to me. Right? I held on to him and he held on to me. But the only way I truly walk with Jesus, it's not because I really hold on to him. It's because he does what? It's because he holds on to me. And that's what you need. You don't, you're not gonna hold on. Even if you give your heart to Jesus all the way, you're not gonna always hold on to him. But but guess what? He's always holding on to you. And that's what you need. That's the only way you're gonna make it in. And God will give you that as a free gift, man. You there's nothing you gotta work for. You don't have to, it's not you don't have to go to church for it. You don't have to be baptized. It's just that. It's just the fact that you you surrender, and then you're gonna actually want to do those things because of what he's done. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, so tell me what you th what when do you think you feel like you'll surrender it all to Jesus? When do you think you'll give it all up? What's keeping you from really want to follow Jesus with your whole heart? As much as what do you think? Honestly, I feel like I could do it just like tomorrow. You know? Really? Yeah. I feel like maybe not tomorrow, but I feel like. I need to start working on myself. Okay. And give me to be better, be a better person. Yeah. Start doing better things, and then I think I could actually. Right. Yeah. Right. Do you know it, it takes all? It, all it takes for you to, to follow Jesus is is even telling him right now. The Bible says if you confess with your sin, confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart that Jesus has been raised from the dead. He says the Bible says you will be saved. All right. Is it something you want to think about before you really make that commitment, or is it something you want to? If this is like a green light, a green light says I'm ready to follow Jesus right now. I don't know what all it is. A yellow light says, I just really want to kind of think about this for a while and maybe investigate this for a while. And then maybe later on, I'll give my life to Jesus. Or red light says, man, I appreciate the interview. I'm just not interested at all. What would you say you at? I would do a yellow light okay. just so I could like look more into it. Absolutely. You know, yeah. And then focus on it. And That's good, try to man. Get better at it. You got a Bible at home? Yes. All right. Start, you know, the book of John. Yes. Start reading the book of John and see if you can just make yourself read a, a chapter a day. And through the book of John, especially when you get to like chapter three and four, you'll start to see these people that were really broken. Man, it, it was a girl and lady in there married like six times and God saved her. It was a, a guy in there that was a religious person. Like he went to church, grew up in church. His name was Nicodemus. And he really didn't understand what I just shared with you. But Jesus eventually got him to see what, it, what I was. It's, and it was a guy that was uh, born, like born, like lame. Jesus said, like he, 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 he takes people that are really broken and he saves them and he makes masterpieces. So he takes broken pieces and makes masterpieces. And so, man, I really hope you will look into it. Start reading the book of John, maybe a chapter a day, especially in chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. You'll start to see how God encountered these people, man, and their life has been changed and it's still happening even today. Yeah, right? for sure. You got, you got any questions? No, yeah, I'll, go, yeah, I'll go start reading it when I get home. Man, so. that'd be great, man. Sure. But man, I sure appreciate the interview. I think my first couple of times. <laughs> That's I what play, I played. Um, because eternity is such a long time to be wrong. Like, I don't want to leave this world thinking like, do I got it? Yeah. Am I in? Am I out? Like, like, come on, man. Yeah.